Another day is here, and you're ready for it. What to wear? Check. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Check. Planning for what's next and how to save for it? That's where Bank of America can help. For your financial to-dos, Bank of America has experts ready to help get you closer to your goals. Get started at one of our local financial centers or 24-7 in our mobile banking app. Find a location near you at bankofamerica.com slash talk to us. What would you like the power to do? Mobile banking requires downloading the app and is only available for select devices. Message and data rates may apply. Bank of America and a member FDIC. There's a lot that could impress you about the all-new Honda Prologue EV. True, it's got class-leading passenger space and clean, thoughtful design and intuitive technology. But what really sets the Prologue apart from the competition is that it's more than an EV. It's a Honda. Honda, the power of dreams. Visit honda.com slash prologue to learn more. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio, with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, wherever you're doing, and welcome to your Daily Red on Saturday the 20th of July. I'm Dave Davis coming to you from a muggy Edinburgh. The sun's a little bit out, but it's muggy more than anything. Hopefully you get some sunshine wherever you are, because we are in the summer months. We are in pre-season time. And as Liverpool account tweeted recently, there is only four weeks till the start of the season proper. And it's right that I open with that, ladies and gents. The start of the season proper, because... Technically, Liverpool played their first game. First, it was a friendly, wasn't it? A glorified training session. But you could argue their first game under Arnie Schlott, didn't they? And they were defeated by Preston 1-0. Now, as I'm saying this, the majority of Reds, I think, is sensible. Now, it is just a glorified training session. It doesn't mean anything in the context of things, etc., etc. I think most know that. There were 25 players used. 2-5. A lot of kids... Some good stars, though, it was good to say. I mean, the first half, you had the likes of Van der Berg, Kwanzaa, Curtis. So, Bosley did 33 minutes, Harvey, Salah. So, there was a lot of stars. A good exercise for them, more than anything. In the second half, that's where the kids really got their stay. I mean, there was the odd one. So, Vendo, Vajsetic getting minutes, which is good to know. Tyler Morton, etc. But that's just like 25 different players and to be fair to Preston they won by a goal it was their only shot on target as Arnie Schlott mentioned in his post conference so pro conference is stretching it his post chat with LFC TV and fair play to Robbie Brady it's a heck of a goal some sort of 40 yards lobs the keeper pounces on a, a misplaced pass or mistake from Connor Bradley and do you know what some people are still tweeting that God if he's going to make irrelevant Probably the only noteworthy things I think some people picked upon were Jane Dines was out. That got revealed as Jane by James Pierce. This a minor injury. Kelleher didn't play at all, but that wasn't confirmed for him. Robbo, you're not surprised. I know people go, hold on. What about Sabozlai played a bit of time, but Sabozlai only played 33 minutes. Robbo didn't play at all. I'm surprised Sabozlai played at all, to be honest. So there's nothing really into that. Kelleher, people will ask questions about that. Just as the nature of preseason, the quietness and things to do as it were, but yeah, what the, the result, absolutely irrelevant. If you think the result has any importance or bearing, I think most know it doesn't, but 
think back to the season where in pre-season we lost to Dortmund, we then lost to Sevilla, we then drew with Sporting, and we got battered, I'd say, in Edinburgh. I went to that game against Napoli, played at Murrayfield, and trusted him on 3-0. I remember that day, because it was the debut of young Harvey Elliott. And it's funny, actually, when people saying at the time, we've just won like the Champions League, and look at all these players we're signing that don't be anything like Van der Berg and Harvey Elliott, and here we are today, all of a sudden. But again, for that game, a lot of senior first-team players are missing. It was Copper America time. So why am I telling you, why are you talking about this? Well, that was the pre-season before the 1920 campaign. And you know what that led to. So just if you were unsure, something to think about. It means absolutely nothing. There was a, a couple of good comments. I think Arne Slot did a season interview, a quick catch-up with Liverpool FC afterwards. So just to run through a few of those comments. The most important thing at the start of slot is that everybody was fit before the game and they stayed fit during the game as well. Absolutely important. If you think anything different, would you rather have won one now and had someone injured? It, it's an easy answer. It's, it's completely the focus. It's been a good two weeks. Unfortunately, the result today was not what we wanted, but they stayed fit. Many of them got minutes. A lot of young players got a few minutes, so that was a good thing too. Good news all round, ladies and gents. You also mentioned about the game, just in case anyone is watching it and you know does an analysis. I don't know it's not too valuable, I know, but I understand that people will have looked at it. I genuinely mean that. I understand people are looking to start to see patterns of play. How does slot maybe set up any influence? I get if people are looking at that. I've also seen some people go, oh, go through an analysis. Like, oh, like, be what you want to be. If you want to do a bit of analysis on it, watched it for that. Fair play if you just missed the Reds. Fair play. Been a long time, hasn't it? You don't care about international football and that type of thing. Fair play. It is what it is. He was honest. as I said, look, like I said, we controlled the game completely. We only conceded one shot. The bad thing about it, it was a shot that went in. It was a great goal, though. We had some good build-up moments, had some good chances in the first half as well. Second half, I didn't think we created as much, which is normal because we had a lot of young players. But I couldn't have passed for more from the boys in the first two weeks. They work really hard, try to implement ideas, and it's not that we only bring new ideas. There's a lot of things that have been done here that were really good. So that's nothing else matters. No one got injured. It's get great fitness for everyone. There we go. Liverpool technically opened the Arne slot era with a game. I'll leave you to decide if you agree with that or not. Other stuff to mention today on Daily Red. I mean, VVD, he's been busy, isn't he? If you're thinking just how big a name VVD is, he is the player that they use when they tweet about four weeks to go from the official LFC account. Virgil spent his night, not say the day, the night, but hanging around with Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, and LeBron James. That was Virgil's evening couple of nights ago by the looks of it and also the one I'm mentioning, why I mentioned it here because David Lynch is an interesting piece to his substat well worth a read well worth a description talking about that Virgil wants a, a new contract give it to him he made those comments and people had worried about it a little bit hadn't they in terms of I need to think about my future for club for international David Lynch has said that all the indications are very much wants to stay and actually those comments specifically related to the international arena is thinking as an analogy. James Milner, when he retired, because he knows he could get longer at club level that way. So definitely an interesting read. Well worth a subscribe if you haven't done it yet at all. Other things to be aware of. I mean, this is towards no surprise. James Pearce wrote about it and a few have tweeted it. Reese Williams and Billy Cometio are considering their futures they have offered. I mean, you don't want to sound horrible but they're never going to make the grade. They know they need to move on. It's just when that happens. I mean, milestones as well. It's seven years to the only Estonian to play for Liverpool. Ragnar Klavan signed in 2005. Peter Crouch signed 19 years ago, if that makes you feel old, doesn't it, as well? And maybe uh, the biggest milestone of any player, Sir Roger Hunt 
would have been 86 years old today. The legend that was, one of Liverpool's greatest ever players, greatest goal scorer. There's many a tale told about Sir Roger Hunt, and quite rightly, rumour reason have even has it that Jim Broadbent played on the same youth teams, but who knows? But yeah, there you go. Sir Roger Hunt would have been 86 years old today. Well, the thing specifically related to oh, AI before we get on to the transfer bit. You know when you're really stressed or not feeling so great about your life or about yourself? Talking to someone who understands can really help. But who is that person? How do you find them? Where do you even start? Talkspace. Talkspace makes it easy to get the support you need. With Talkspace, you can go online, answer a few questions about your preferences, and be matched with a therapist. And because you'll meet your therapist online, you don't have to take time off work or arrange childcare. You'll meet on your schedule, wherever you feel most at ease. If you're depressed, stressed, struggling with a relationship, or if you want some counseling for you and your partner, or just need a little extra one-on-one support, Talkspace is here for you. Plus, Talkspace works with most major insurers, and most insured members only pay a $25 copay or less. No insurance? No problem. Now get $80 off of your first month with promo code SPACE80 when you go to Talkspace.com. Match with a licensed therapist today at Talkspace.com. Save $80 with code SPACE80 at Talkspace.com. Smoothie King's new lemonade lineup is here. Lemonade, lemonade, the Smoothie King way. Try a strawberry guava lemonade SK refresher. Over ice. A power up in a cup. Energize. Or a blueberry lemonade smoothie. Blend it up in your cup. Made with real fruit, real juice for a real sipping good summer. Yum, yum, gotta get some. Smoothie King's new lemonade lineup, all for a limited time. Who's thirsty? Nunes did a, a pod for EPL Index, and we actually shared it on the Anfield Index side. It's a really good one to be aware of. That we did with Tom Robertson, our South American expert. And at the same time, we'd also been reaching out to South American experts that we use from AI trying to get an update because it's all really gone quiet, hasn't it? From Comnable on the whole Uruguay, the families, the Pfizer, whatever you want to call it, the Darwin incident or the incident that Uruguay were involved in that Darwin was part of. So the latest update we had from Tom, it's, it's a good listen to the pod if you do want to spend a bit of time listening to that one. We talked about Darwin. The suggestion is, and again, this is from all sources that we get in, it's kind of down on the priority order from Comnable. They're a bad organization anyway, is, is what I mean by that, in terms of their pure organization, not their capacity. And with the Enzo situation, with the security at the Hard Rock Stadium, they've got a lot more pressing calls, even Bielsa being outspoken after that. Those are apparently higher on their docket than getting around to Darwin and the Uruguayan players. And naturally, there's a feeling from all the source, including Tom, that they will naturally fight that Uruguay appeal. It So as much as you would like this to be nipped in the bud quickly, it feels like you may just have to wait for it a little bit longer. Unfortunately, I say myself in that because you want to know. But in a weird way, and it could happen this way, that all our South American sources are telling us that the expectation is in their opinion, based on comparable history and the way they act, Darwin will get a ban, but for international games, i.e. will not affect Liverpool. So we will have to see about that and where that leads to. But yeah, unfortunately, like it or not, it doesn't look like it's going to be a quick resolution to that. Other things to mention from a, an AI point of view, there's quite a few things coming this weekend. We've got a transfer show, we got EPL market metrics, which will also release on the DAI side as well. So Trev and Ben, I'll be back with. Got David Lynch on Monday. Cy Brundish did a tweet, and I think is it good? I don't know, it wasn't deliberately done to this. So, so just to read this tweet, he said, if the new, the new is in quote marks, training strategy at Liverpool reduces injuries and increases availability, I'll be throwing away 32 years of refining and understanding of physiology and training strategies. Genuinely, I'll be delighted. And will be champions. So that's got a lot of traction, shall we say, a lot of comments, a lot of thoughts on that in both sides. But it's important to mention because if we're sharing his thoughts, side, I remember the up team on fatigue index. So it's worth calling that out. There will be a fatigue index coming for you in the near future. Good one to shout out there. A couple of other articles wider afield. 
this is Anfield. Do a good few quotes about Ian Rush and what he says. That in essence, again, saying Rush, he's saying preseason doesn't really matter. It's just about getting fit and things like that. So not to read too much into anything. But at the same time, also a few writers did an interesting bits on things you could see, little patterns of play, etc. from the Preston friendly. If you choose to read anything and see it, fair play. If you don't, fair play. Like, or well, whatever people want to do from that. The transfer stuff, that's dominating everything, isn't it? Liverpool are a rumour club at the moment, and it's important to say that. There doesn't seem to be anything solid. There's got to be anything completely honest about that. There does not seem to be anything solid around Liverpool. There's a lot of rumours were being used, I think, to sometimes help agents or fill quotes or whatever you want to call it. But, yeah, an interesting one. So let's go through a few bits that link Liverpool Quite a few had that Adrian Arabio was of interest to Liverpool and that they were looking at United as well. And they preferred some people to know journalists that he chose United over Liverpool. As Louis Steele and a few others said, Liverpool have zero interest in Adrian Arabio. That was never going to be a starter, never has been, never going to be a target. So you can just cross any thought of that one quite rightly as well. A few Japanese football sites had Ubo, the Real Sociedad winger, left footed, plays on the right side. A profile that had been looked at for a while. Quite a few of the Japanese sites had that we'd agreed terms with him, but it was now about a transfer fee with Real Sociedad, although we had a release clause as well. Again, you can't see it. It just feels like rumour city at the moment. Probably going to pronounce his name wrong, but. Dean Hutchins, I think it's pronounced. Tuto Mercato is linked with Liverpool. And Newcastle have also said to be interested in this player. Apparently that article says that both are walking, I think it's right to say, at the £25 million valuation for the 19-year-old Spanish under-21 defender. Again, possible, but it's nothing. It, it all just feels like Tomorrow's chip paper, doesn't it? We are rumour city, I'm afraid, at the moment. And then one that... I'm going to call this the Lazarus of rumours. That's the way I would describe it. CM Juno. Now, now they use us. They just link Liverpool players with Portuguese-based... I'm well, sorry, Liverpool with Portuguese-based players. And it's so often poo-pooed. Yeah, I use the word poo-poo. You call it what you want. But how do they bring back this time? Inacio. They say Liverpool are set on Inacio. They are set to send a proposal for Inacio in a few days. This is despite many of the patch journals, many, and I mean, I pretty much say many, I mean, pretty much all, trying to think who hasn't reported this off the top of my head, saying, no, Liverpool are not interested in Inacio for various reasons which make complete sense. So, yeah, rumour city, I'm afraid. That's where we seem to be at the moment. Rabio, Kubo, Hudson, Inacio, who knows what will come. And I get it from people at the moment. They want to think, are we doing stuff? I mean, it's not this all lecturing people. It's just remembering that Richard Hughes was really clear on how he saw the transfer window that a quiet July, followed by sort of a, an orchestrated chaos and a massive crescendo at the end of August. We're not even in August yet. We're not even in the final month. I think people are more beginning looking up because United's doing things like Rabio, Ugarte, the whole Yoro thing was debatable. We're talking about Yoro in depth with David Lynch on the Media Matters Monday, but I get it. People want us to sign players. So do I. There's a lot of time left in the transfer window. A lot of time. Yes, I get it. You want them in as early as possible to bed. I'm not doubting or disagreeing with that. However, it is a summer where it's taken a long time because of copper, because of Euros, Olympics, all this type of thing as well. It's not, if you actually just look, it's not been as busy as it normally has. I mean, it looks like Arsenal might get Calafiori done shortly. Even City have done Savino, but that's their own play. That's just moving a multi club. So we know what the story is with the 115 is there. United are a bit of an outlier because they've got so much to do, haven't they? It's funny, actually, and I'll call them out on this now. 
Red alert. We've got one couple of those coming up soon, I should say, as well. Mark Evans, and I'll challenge him on this. I'll say this on the pod. He has said that with Ugarte coming, adding with Xerxes and Yoro, that he believes United will finish up well Liverpool. That's the sort of nonsense I feel I'm going to deal with on messages, etc. at the moment. So, yeah, let's see what happens, ladies and gents. It's not going to be sorted this weekend. It won't be sorted on Sunday's Daily Red either. But don't let it stress you. Enjoy your weekend. And on Saturday, the 20th of July, that was the Daily Red podcast. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds and it means the world to the people who create these free shows. Sports Social Podcast Network.